Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. We got some good stories to go through, but we are trying to do things a little bit differently. We have heard some of you uh, mention that three videos a day might be too much. We were planning on just trying that out for a little while. Now we're gonna be trialing a different release structure, which is two videos a day, um, but we'll see how that goes. Also, instead of just singular topics in each videos or like a couple slightly related topics, we're basically gonna turn the two videos into, I guess, like half episodes of Hot news so a conglomeration of six to eight different news stories that are interesting and that way we can uh, see what we can push out here on the hot news channel again all of this is trial and experimentation and we just want to thank the 10,000 of you who have subscribed to this little uh, experiment so far it has meant a lot to us and we will continue but with with all of that being said let's go ahead and talk about what the 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 news about AMD Ryzen is and there's uh, quite a few good things coming out of it anyways I don't know why I keep talking like that, but it appears that through some information that we have about Zen 2 or the Ryzen 3000 setup, it looks like they are gonna be tremendous at memory overclocking, actually putting them on par with what Intel is currently and that there's ratings for up to DDR4 5000 megahertz on the Zen 2 processors. Part of this is because of a new Zen 2 implementation with how it handles the Infinity Fabric because as you might remember, the way Ryzen is set up is that Infinity Fabric is linked to the D DRAM speed. And so the DRAM speed, let's say if it's at 3200 megahertz, since it's double data rate, it's actually at 1600 megahertz for the Infinity Fabric. And pushing it much further than that, Infinity Fabric's just not really capable of handling that. So if you get up to 5000 megahertz on the DDR4, that would mean that the Infinity Fabric's running at 2500 megahertz, and it's just not designed in a way where it can do that at this point. And so there's going to be a new implementation which allows you to have half Infinity Fabric rate. So for a 5,000 megahertz RAM setup, you would actually have 1,250 megahertz on the Infinity Fabric, which would make it slower than if you had 3,200 megahertz and just had the normal Infinity Fabric setup. So there are gonna be compromises. If you need the fast RAM, you'll be able to downclock the Infinity Fabric, but then you would lose the speed of the interconnection of the chiplets because that's how Ryzen works, is that the Infinity Fabric ha handles the communication between the core complexes on on the CPU, so you would have slower gaming performance if you choose to do this, but if you're somebody who relies on faster RAM, then it would allow you to have it set up that way. One of the benefits that would come from having Threadripper with 16 cores, as opposed to what we're expecting the Ryzen 9s to have with 16 cores, is that you do get quad channel memory on Threadripper. There's no anticipation of quad channel on AM4. It looks like it's still gonna be dual channel, so that would still be a benefit of what Threadripper would have over regular regular Ryzen, but now regular Ryzen seems to have faster memory speeds altogether, which is pretty good. And on top of that, there has been some indication that AMD has been passing around some chips to different OEMs of the 12 and 16 core variety. So last week when we reported on the news that finally, Finally, there was a 16 core CPU on the AIM4 platform that was in a 3D Mark database. There's now also the rumor floating around there that the 12 core Ryzen 7 and the 16 core Ryzen 9 are floating around for testing to motherboard vendors, to OEMs, and that it actually looks like it's gonna become a reality sometime soon. And then on top of that, with the new BIOSes that have rolled out for X470 and B450 motherboards, it, mostly in ASUS and ASRock flavors, it's been shown that there's some code in there that indicates that there is support for Ryzen 3000 baked into these BIOSes, even if it's not for the full CPU support, it's definitely coming and there's a lot to get ready for. We're only a couple weeks away from the announcement on the 27th, we're two weeks away, specifically, two weeks away from the announcement on the 27th by Lisa Su at Computex with the keynote. You better believe that we gonna be there and we gonna be letting you know what's going down, both here on the Hot News channel as well as on the UFT Tech channel. So stay subscribed for that. But let's talk about AMD and Intel, and specifically the GPU department, because Raja Kadori has some choice words for AMD. Not really, but he was asked about what he thinks of AMD GPUs, what's going on there, since he did work at AMD when they were developing Navi. Raja Kadori actually knows a little bit, uh, but he uh, didn't have the best words to say about his former employer, saying AMD has two architectures, no memory or interconnect strategy that I know of, and the size of the developer ecosystem is tiny. In fact, without our invaluable software contributions, they have no software ecosystem that's meaningful. Dying, dying. Oh, Papa Lele. Is that how the saying goes? 
Ah Papa Lala. Okay, anyways, dang, Raja Kadori not being kind to AMD, but from all that we've been hearing through the rumor mill about Intel's GPUs, they are going to be the foe to compete with NVIDIA and AMD's Navi. Looks like it's gonna be a great value option yet again, but not something that's actually gonna go toe to toe in performance. And Raja Kadori basically confirming that, especially since Navi was his baby. Actually, no, Vega was his baby, and then Navi took all of his like engineering people and he completed Navi while he was there, or he helped, he helped finalize Navi while he was there, but it doesn't look like it's something that he's all too impressed with, if that gives you any indication of what you're supposed to think of it. He's sour. He's sour. I, I don't think he is, he left willingly. He's sour to the extent that it looks like the Radeon Technologies department of AMD is falling apart. I'm not gonna go into that on today's episode. Let's talk about more Intel beef, and this time it's with Micron, in case you don't remember, they co-produced 3D crosspoint technology for their Optane drives. Micron was involved with that, but a couple months ago, there was this split where they're gonna go their separate ways, and it finally looks like that Micron's like, no, gosh dang it, just give us all of the technology and we'll pay you for it. So it looks like Micron is about to pay 1.3 to 1.5 billion dollars to buy Intel out of the 3D cross point setup that they had with the IM flash technologies. So yeah, Intel making money off of hurting other people. Although they didn't really hurt Micron. It, it was just a mutual disagreement thing, you know, like one of those kind divorces. And then let's talk about slightly more related Intel news and that's ASRock has revealed that they are going to have a mini ITX motherboard for the most insane CPUs that you could possibly imagine, the LGA 3647 with support for six channel memory and 28 cores on a mini ITX motherboard. There's not much else on the board besides the socket, the RAM slots, a PCI Express slot, that's it. Like it has VGA, ethernet, and then a couple USB ports. This thing is so freaking tiny with the socket taking up so much of it. There's not even a mini ITX board for Threadripper out on the market, but that's also 4,096 pins instead of LGA 3647. That's neither here nor there. That's an impressive motherboard. I'm excited for that thing. And then let's talk about the danger of wearables in the future, or at least in the present, because the Netherlands has people that are on uh, ankle monitors. You know, you gotta keep your, your hooligans and your ruffians and your criminals all locked up in their houses, making sure they're not going anywhere, except when you might do a software update. <laughs> because apparently they did an OTA software update to a bunch of ankle monitors around the Netherlands and it borked them so hard that they couldn't track them anymore. So they had to go, the, the, the Netherlands police had to go around to these people's houses and make sure that they were still there and apparently, even do some preemptive arrests to make sure that nobody escaped because of this on May 9th. This is a fun future that we're living in. Anyways, this isn't the first time that the Netherlands has had an ankle outage like this. Apparently there were some cell network that went down in August of 2018 and it made 450 ankle monitors go offline. So they had to, you know, scramble the popo to make that happen. Is that a derogatory term for the police? I feel like it's just a fun term, but other people might not have. Anyways, my connotation is lighthearted. There are some people who might call them that to demean them. Not my intent, but the Netherlands police dealing with ankle monitor outages because IOT, just like, as soon as you connect everything to the internet, there's the danger that it could just, like, I'm waiting for the day that I have an IOT fridge and a software update bricks its refrigeration capabilities. That is going to happen. That is the life we're living. And not to mention things like self-driving cars, like the amount of like technology that has to go into a software update for that. And they might have it tested on like a couple dozen devices, but then when it rolls out to like, let's say a couple hundred thousand cars, then it, you see, oh, oh, that killed a few people. Crap. The future is scary with OTA software updates, even though it's exciting that you can do it. There, there's some difficulty with the implementation on it. And then let's talk about probably one of my favorite news stories of the day. So my friends, I don't know if you know about one of the first analog keyboards that came out to the market, the Wooting One, 
We actually were able to snag one at Computex two years ago. And in case you don't know, analog keyboards are ones that have lasers that detect how far you're pressing it. So like, let's say you're playing an RPG, WASD is no longer just a harsh movement, which would be the digital equivalent, but rather it's gonna indicate how hard you're pressing it, which can allow you to walk as well as run, depending on how you're doing it. And then racing games, there's a whole bunch of indication. Anyways, the whole point of the news is that they are announcing that they're gonna have new switches coming out, which are called Lecker switches. And in case you don't know, Lecker is a South African, is it slang? Is it technically slang or is it an official word? It's an official word. It's an official word. What does it mean? Nice. Nice. Lekker. Anyways, the, the Wooting manufacturers are from the Netherlands, I believe, which they speak Dutch there, but Afrikaans is like a off Dutch language. And I don't think Lekker is a word in Netherlands. So it looks like it's a South African name. Oh yeah, something to be proud of. You know what else you should be proud of? Your childhood, because you had some of the most glorious cartoons growing up, not, not least of which was Invader Zim and Rocco's Modern Life. I'm talking to millennials now, millennials that are about my age. Okay, so this is a small demographic. Anyways, it looks like Nickelodeon is trying to revive them with movies. We knew about the Invader Zim movie. I'm just now finding out about the, the Rocco's Modern Life movie. It's gonna be called Static Kling. And then in the Invader Zim movie is called Enter the Florpus. Anyways, the whole reason that this is news is because apparently it's coming to Netflix. Netflix is gonna get their hands on the Invader Zim and Rocco Modern Life movie, Rocco's Modern Life movie. That's exciting for me as a person. I just wanted to fill you in in case you care at all. So that's gonna wrap up this little hot news episode. Let me know what you think of the new format, which is basically like a mini hot news episode. I'm keen to hear from you down in the comments down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. In case you wanna support us here directly, you can check out our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash UFD tech. It allows us to keep the lights on here, to pay for staff, to run two different channels and you know make the world go round. So just support us if you so want to, not obligated whatsoever. You watching the ads is helpful. Anyways, I'm Brett with the hot news channel. I love you so much. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too, bye. These pillows smell nice.